Hey, folks, Dr. Joe Esposito here. I am so glad you're with us today. What we're talking about today is cholesterol. Now, number one, re- number one medication my patients are on are blood pressure medications. Number two, it's a toss-up between cholesterol and uh, diabetes medication. I think cholesterol kind of wins for the number two spot there. And I'm, you're going to be surprised because uh, uh, my, my engineer, Ahmad, we always get together before the show. He says, what's the show about? We talk a little bit. And I said, I'm going to talk about how cholesterol really isn't all that bad in most cases. And he said, oh, a new twist on cholesterol. So, yeah, I'm going to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly. And you need to know because there's different types of cholesterol. And in reality, there's only one type, but there's different versions of it. And it gets a little confusing. But you're going to be surprised to hear how important cholesterol is to your life. In fact, you'd be dead without it. So you got to be careful when you start messing with cholesterol and what you're doing with it. It's kind of a little scary. So you've probably heard too much low-density lipoproteins, LDLs. The LDL cholesterol in the bloodstream can build up and form plaque, and it sticks to your artery walls. Now, in order to understand how cholesterol, the good and bad, or high and low levels, how it affects your health, you have to first understand what cholesterol is. And no one's ever explained to you what cholesterol is. Cholesterol is a fatty, wax-like substance, and it's found naturally in the cells in the body. And your body needs cholesterol to manufacture hormones, synthesize vitamin D, and a bunch of other functions. So you have to have cholesterol in order to be healthy and alive. And according to the American Heart Association, your body manufactures all the cholesterol it needs in your liver. But it can also get cholesterol from food you eat. Dietary sources of, well, animal sources, of course, uh, meat, eggs, uh, high-fat dairy, uh, so butter. So these are sources of putting cholesterol into the body. But these foods contain cholesterol. Foods that are high in something called saturated fats or trans fats, you've probably heard me talk about those before, can trigger the liver to produce more cholesterol, and that's the major source of your uh, increasing blood cholesterol. So it's not just the cholesterol you're eating, it's also you're eating bad foods, fried foods, fatty foods. When you heat oil at a high temperature, it changes the molecular structure, it becomes a trans fat, and then it can get into the liver and it can stimulate the liver to produce cholesterol. So the typical Western American diet is loaded with these foods, not only the animal products, but the foods that actually raise the cholesterol. And raising cholesterol levels can lead to epidemic problems like heart disease and high blood pressure. But again, it's not the cholesterol that's bad. It's when the cholesterol, the low-density lipoproteins, oxidize, or essentially they rust, and then they stick to the artery walls. So the bottom line, I'll give you the bottom line, I'll go into a little bit more, is that you can have high cholesterol, but if it's not a lot stuck to the artery walls, it's not really clogging up the arteries. You can have low cholesterol, if I take your blood, but a lot of it is stuck to the artery walls, that's way more dangerous. So you got to be careful about this. So the LDL, the term low-density lipoprotein, um, uh, is, is the one that gets all the bad press. But cholesterol is carried through the circulatory system on what's called lipoproteins. Lipo meaning fat, protein meaning protein. These are little packages made up of protein on the inside and fat on the outside. And there's two primary, primary ones. We have talked about the high-density, low-density lipoproteins. High density is what we call the good cholesterol because these lipoproteins travel around and they pick up They hook onto the excess fat, the LDLs, and they take it to the liver where it can be broken down and recycled. Here's the thing with with cholesterol. It's not just passed out of your body. A lot of it is recycled. So that's telling us right away that it's really important. Your body wouldn't recycle something if it wasn't that important. So the low-density lipoproteins, they're just kind of small packets of this protein and fat. Uh, They're the ones that are causing the problems because they can eventually build up and form plaque on the artery walls. This is called arteriosclerosis or atherosclerosis. You may have heard that too. Over time, the plaque accumulation can block up the blood flow to the heart, the brain, the legs, and that can raise your risk of heart disease, stroke, peripheral artery disease, and a little piece of this fat can break off. And if it breaks off, it floats around, and it goes through bigger vessels and smaller vessels and smaller vessels. It eventually can get stuck in a really small vessel, cutting off the blood supply to a certain part of the body. And if it happens in the brain, it's called a stroke. Now, sometimes you can have a stroke and not know it. It cuts off a little bit of blood to a little bit of part of the brain. No big deal. But you can have massive strokes as well, and many times this is one of the causes. Now, a blood vessel can rupture too, and that would be a stroke as well. Other type of fat you may have heard about is called triglycerides. Now, triglycerides are a fat, but it's not a combination of proteins and fat. So it's not a cholesterol. Triglyceride is not a cholesterol. And they circulate through the blood, and they, they, they carry... Uh, energy. I don't it sounded like this. When I was young, way back, these called calories. Now it's no longer calories, it's energy. Energy sounds good, doesn't it? I need more energy. If I said you need more calories, no, I don't need more calories. I need more energy. 
So the term energy is now interchangeable with calories. I don't like that. So what this does, it, it, it carries calories through the blood, and a high triglyceride level makes a high LDL level worse in terms of how much fatty buildup you're going to have in your artery walls. Now, triglycerides can come from several different things. Many times it's from eating too much sugar. So what happens is this. You eat sugar, breads, cookies, cakes, donuts, pasta, plain old sugar, and the body takes what it can, the glucose form of that sugar. There's different types of sugar, but the glucose is used as fuel. Once all the glucose is used, all the cells are full of glucose, can't take any more, the body takes that glucose and stores it as glycogen. Glycogen is your reserve tank of energy. Once all the glycogen is stored, the energy tanks are filled up, the body takes those, uh, that glycogen, converts it into triglycerides, and then sends it into the blood to be stored as fat. This is why eating sugar makes you fat. Now, if you're eating a lot of carbohydrates, one of my staff is a type 1 diabetic. He came to me the other day. He said, I'm eating really great, doc, and my blood sugar is high. I said, get some fiber because fiber is going to block up the receptor sites where sugar get absorbed, gets absorbed, but it's also going to push a lot of the sugar through the colon and get it out of the system. So when it comes to sugar, that's a whole nother show, fiber is going to be the key. Folks, got to go to a break. If you have any health care questions, I'm going to open the lines right away. The number here at the studio, 844-44-DR-JOEY. Fuck. A little bit of Gary by my side. A little Sierra, all I need. A little Ahmad is what I see. A little bit of Lewis in the sun. A little Dr. Joe, he's number one. Well, ain't that cool. <laughs> The Mambo Number no. 5, the Dr. Joe version of the Mambo Number no. 5. Play that a lot. I like that song. That's a good one. Yeah. So anyway, that was uh, put together by our very dear friend Tim Andrews, who's uh, uh, the incredible comedian and, and uh, voice uh, over extraordinaire guy who's on the Eric Von Hessler show, and he put that together for us, and that's, that's just so cool. I think that's great. So anyway, we're talking about cholesterol today, and there's different ways you can have high, high cholesterol. One is hereditary. Of course, you can get it from your family. That's about one in 100. So about one in 100 people have hereditary cholesterol. Now, a lot of people come to me and say, Dr. Joe, I have hereditary high cholesterol. How do you know that? Well, my mother and father had it. Well, it doesn't mean your mother and father had it. You live the same diet. You live the same household. It, chances are that's may, that may be why you have it. It's very rare to have somebody with hereditary high cholesterol. And you, there's, there's genes that are play, play into that. Smoking, of course, smoking doesn't directly cause high cholesterol by itself, but it's a major proven uh, risk of heart disease and stroke. And this risk rises if you have high LDL levels because the cigarettes produce free radicals. Now, free radicals are molecules. They're like Pac-Man, waka, waka, waka. They eat through things. And if you have um, a lot of free radicals in your diet, and in, in your body from smoking, um, it's eating away at the, at the artery walls. And so what happens is with cholesterol, the body lays down cholesterol almost like a scab. You get a little scratch on, on the inside of your artery. The body lays down cholesterol to kind of fill it in. And we'll talk about that, how the body needs cholesterol to produce new cells because every cell has cholesterol in it. And so if you have a lot of damage in your arteries from smoking or bad diet, alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, artificial sweetener, stress, the damage in the arteries, you're constantly having to generate new cells, new scabs, if you will, to cover up that damage. And the body will raise its cholesterol level to try to fix the scabs, to produce more scabs or produce new cells. And so now you may have high cholesterol. We put you on medication to bring the cholesterol down. It didn't treat the cause. It treated the symptom. The symptom is your cholesterol is high. The cause is why is your cholesterol high? Your body may be smart enough to say, I got to raise the cholesterol to generate more cell function to prevent these, ar these arteries from getting stressed out, maybe even bursting. And so high cholesterol may not be so bad. Um, we talked about this uh, at the break. We live stream these shows, by the way, folks. We're on uh, Facebook and Instagram, so you can follow us on Facebook and Instagram. And somebody asked off the air uh, about that. And I said, well, you always want to get what's called your C-reactive protein, the letter C, reactive protein, whenever you get your blood work done. Because C-reactive protein is a general test to tell you how much inflammation there is in the body. So you may have high cholesterol, but not a lot of inflammation. You may have low cholesterol and a lot of inflammation. And so you got to be careful with that. So in, as part of your blood work, I'd strongly advise you get a C-reactive protein done to see how much inflammation there is. If the inflammation is high, then we gotta ask the question, why is the inflammation high? And then we gotta look at things like diet. Now you can really improve your health with diet. I mean, that's one that you have control over. And that's why as a chiropractor, if you have neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, acid reflux, uh, joint pain, come see us because that may not be something you can fix. We're very good at fixing that. But the diet you have 100% control over. 
And that's why I want you to understand that you, you're, you're determining a lot of what's going on in your body. So if you eliminate processed foods that contain things like trans fat or hydrogenated oil, partially hydrogenated oil, and limit your saturated fat, it's the animal protein. Of course, I don't eat animal protein. I've decided a long time ago, it doesn't make sense to eat animal protein. Uh, instead, and it increase, uh, if you're going to eat fats, good fats, but really don't have to have a lot of fats. If you're eating fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds, there's going to be fat in your food. You don't really have to add fat to your diet. And of course, if you, and this one Dr. Uh, uh, Gutierrez, I guess his name is, or Gutierrez, he, he recommends consume a diet mostly of whole plant-based foods that are low in saturated animal fats. So guess what? That's exactly what I've been teaching you for the past 35 years. So now the medical community is coming around and saying, yes, that's right. There's also a Dr. Sinatra who's very much uh, uh, on board with what we've been teaching for 35 years as well. He's very well known in the heart disease world. I'm going to start taking calls. If you have any questions, give me a call, 844-44-DR-JOE, 844-44-DR-JOE. That number rings through right to the studio right here. Grace, how can we make your day better? Uh, hi, Dr. Joe. First of all, I want to say I really enjoy your show. I listen every Sunday night. You're a brilliant but woman, my, Grace. My, thank you. My question is, can you help somebody who has uh, spinal stenosis and also um, osteoporosis as well? Sure. Well, let's talk about each one individually. Uh, spinal stenosis is uh, all the vertebrae are stacked up one on top of each other, uh, 24 yes. b bones in the spine. And each vertebrae has a hole in it. And the spinal cord, the spinal column is the bones. The spinal cord runs down through these holes. And then it sends little branches out of nerves that go to different parts of the body. And it's the first thing to form. The brain and the spinal cord, when, you, when the sperm and the egg came together way back when, that's the first thing to form is the brain and the spinal cord. Then we have these little branches of nerves grow off that. And then the body puts bones around it to protect it called the vertebrae. Yes. Canal stenosis is when that little canal where the spinal cord is gets smaller. The question has to come up, and no one asks these questions. Why did the canal get smaller? It's a form of arthritis, of osteoarthritis. The bones are out of alignment, rubbing up against each other, and now the canal is getting smaller. So step number one, we've got to find out where the primary areas are that the canal is stenosing and put those bones back in place to open up the canal the best we can. Yes. Okay, osteoporosis is when the bones become thin. They're not strong anymore. They start to lose their structure. And the first thing people think of is I got to take calcium. Well, the bone is a lot of calcium, but it also has magnesium. It needs vitamin D. It needs boron. So you can't just throw in a bunch of calcium and say it's going to work because no one in the history of the world has, any, has ever cured osteoporosis by taking calcium. I see. And dairy products are not a good source of calcium because they have two uh, proteins and amino acids called methionine and cysteine. And methionine and cysteine need to be neutralized by calcium when they get into the body. So dairy products, especially pasteurized dairy products, you actually go into negative calcium balance. You lose calcium in bone mass by eating dairy. And that was it is being proven by the nurses study, which has been going on for decades now. And it clearly shows the more dairy products you consume, the higher the rate of osteoporosis. So osteoporosis, I've seen this do very, very well. I've seen, I've been in practice 35 years, is get on a plant-based diet. Cut out the seven deadly sins, the acid-forming foods. Alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, artificial sweetener, breads, cookies, cakes, donuts, pastas. Eat more fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds. Take supplements like Dr. Joe's Super Greens, Dr. Joe's Essential Source. That's the minimum supplements everybody should be taking every day. And when I, I've seen osteoporosis reverse in many cases when people change their diet. So it's not that you need more calcium, you need a better diet. Make sense? Yes, it does. All right. I was told I had too much calcium in my blood. Okay, then we have to start looking at the parathyroids. Or you may have a high acid diet, and the body is dumping calcium into the blood to neutralize the acids. So you can get your parathyroid looked at by an endocrinologist, or if you change your diet and then get it checked again, that's what I would recommend, let's see if that calcium goes down. Cut out those bad acid foods, wait, I don't know, two, three months, let's go back and get the blood tested again, and it may balance out the calcium then. I see. Make sense? Yes, it does. A lot of chemistry. Absolutely. All right, Grace, I can't thank you enough for calling. I appreciate it. Folks, if you have any questions, give us a call, 844-44-DR-JOE. I know that was a little lengthy, complicated answer, though. But osteopro uh, uh, canal stenosis, osteoarthritis, those are the bones basically rubbing up against each other. That's where chiropractic comes in. Chiropractic is the most effective, least expensive treatment for pain. Five WSB, Atlantis News and Talk. Hey, folks, Dr. Joe here. So glad you're there. So we're talking today about cholesterol, and it's a big topic because a lot of people are on cholesterol medications. And the medication doesn't solve the problem. It treats the symptoms. Now, that being said, 
don't stop taking your medication. Whatever medication you're on, patients come to you all the time and say, Dr. Joe, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to stop taking my medication. No, don't do that. What we want to do is we want to get you healthy enough so you don't need the medication. So don't stop taking medication until you're healthy enough that you don't need it anymore. Now, the high cholesterol medication, uh, is it, it gets into the liver, and it works in two ways. I'm going to cover that in a little bit. Um, but it also, as it prevents you from producing cholesterol, also prevents you from producing something called coenzyme Q10. And CoQ10 is necessary to get into your cells and makes the mitochondria, the part of the cell that creates energy, work more efficiently. And I'm going to cover that a little bit further uh, later on, too. If you have any healthcare questions, lines are open, 844-44-DR-JOE, 844-44-DR-J-O-E. Uh, caller from Michigan wanted to know your opinion on keeping pets in the house. Uh, I, I, I don't have pets. Uh, if you have pets, I think you should have enough time to stay with them. Um, that's, this is just me on a moral soapbox here. Um, I don't have a problem if you keep them clean. I'm okay with that. They can carry cooties, but so can people too. Um, so if you have pets in the house, that's great. Just keep them clean. Personally, I don't have any carpets in my house. I have hardwoods and tiles throughout my entire house. And the reason is carpets are just a breeding ground for viruses, germs, bacteria, pathogens. If you ever removed really old carpet, a lot of times the guys will wear hazmat suits because there's so much junk and mold growing under the carpet. So I love my, uh, my hardwoods. Uh, I've got my electric vacuum, my, my robot vacuum. I just ran it today, as a matter of fact. Um, I just put it in different rooms, turn it on, go out, come home. It's vacuum, dump it out. It's great. Now the new ones even clean themselves, which is great. Um, so that's how I do it. And then I've got a steam mop uh, that I, I clean my floors with every now and then. I'll just take the steam mop and run it around and get that cleaned up. So if you're good with the pets, you keep your house clean, I'm perfectly fine with that. So let's talk about cholesterol a little bit more. I got a bunch of callers coming in. I see the lines ringing at 844 Dr. Joe. I want to talk about what your blood test means. When you get your blood test back, what does it mean so that you understand better what to do about it? It's important to have a fasting blood test. If you don't have a fasting blood test, you're not going to uh, get a true reading. I had a, uh, I went to get my blood work done and they said, oh, we'll do, your, we'll do your cholesterol too. And I didn't know they were going to do it that day. And I didn't fast. And my triglycerides were very high. Now, my blood work is usually like perfect. I you know, you can write textbooks around my blood. And I thought, why is my blood work high? And I couldn't figure it out. And then I realized I wasn't fasting. And number two, I had eaten some, a big carbohydrate meal before I did that. Now, like I said, sugars get used as glucose. Glucose gets for, converted into glycogen as storage. And then glycogen gets converted into triglycerides where it gets stored as fat. So I had just eaten a carbohydrate meal and my triglycerides were high. Now, had I not known that it should have been fasting and what I did, I might have been put on medication, and then I get on medication. I come I come out of it, and um, the blood the it's normal. And the doctors may say, "Well, stick with this because it's now normal again." So I want you to make sure when you do your blood work, you do it right. Fasting test is more accurate again, specifically for the triglycerides, because triglycerides can remain elevated for several hours after a meal. The results um, you want to look at your HDL. That's a total. We got your total blood cholesterol, which is your HDL, your LDL, and 20% of your triglycerides. Who decided 20%? I have no idea. HDL. These are the high. That's the high density lipoproteins. Um, that's the good ones because they're the one that hook onto the LDLs and carry them away. And now we're finding VLDLs, very low density lipoproteins. And the, again, the smaller the, 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 the cholesterol molecule, the lipoprotein, it can get in between the cells. In, in, your col in, in your arteries, it can get in between the cells because it's so tiny, and then it can get oxidized. It can rot or go rancid, and that's what causes the inflammatory reaction, which then causes the body to produce more cholesterol to lay down extra cells. You need cholesterol to produce cells, kind of like a scab to protect it. Um, fat, I want to get, cover the, the medication. This is really important. If you're on medication, what to do about that? Because, again, I'd love to get you off the medication, but I don't want you to stop taking it I'm not your doctor. I'm not here to tell you to get off your medication. I'm here to help get you healthy enough so you don't need the medication. But first, let's take a caller. If you have any questions, 844-44-DR-JOE, 844-44-DR-JOE, which is what Brandon just dialed. Brandon, how can I make your day better? Hey, Dr. Joe, how are you? I couldn't I'm be actually, happy. Yes. I've actually been a patient before you um, You had me take the uh, apple cider vinegar every morning for my reflux that I had going on a few years back, and it's completely changed my life. Isn't that amazing? But my question right. tonight is I've made the decision, at least I want to try it, I want to transition away from meat. Uh, I don't like the Good way I feel you. after I eat. Awesome. And I was I was wondering if it's just a cold turkey situation or if there's some you know some way to transition out of it into a, a different diet or 
it would be a cold. It would be a cold tofu if you're gonna go to plant based. Right? <laughs> okay. but that dad, dad joke. There, I give myself a bell for the dad joke. So um, no, it's it's you can just stop doing it. You can do it cold turkey, absolutely. Um, if you go to my website, drjoe.com, we do. We, there's a great lecture. Uh, it's called the Seven Deadly Sins in Nutrition. We did that. Uh, I've seen it many times. Perfect. Look at the yeah, follow up one. Great, I love it. Perfect. E- tell everybody they should listen. Right. Oh, I absolutely Thank do. I, I send people to your site all the time. Awesome. And then the follow up one is called So What Can I Eat. And if you just type in So What Can I Eat, it'll bring up an audio, and it talks about breakfast, lunches, dinner, snacks. Um, and that is really a, a simple way to do it. But really, okay. going plant-based, is, going vegetarian is so easy because you just have to not do something. You have to not eat animal products. Right, right. And then I want you to have something. Yeah, that's, okay. that's always been my – the way I eat is, is I'm a grazer. I, I'm 48. I'm, I'm very high energy. I'm in the food industry business, so my schedule's rigid. Sure. And, but I'm high energy, and people always ask me why I eat so much. It's not that I eat so much. I just eat frequently sure. because I'm always feeding my metabolism. Uh huh. I don't sit down and eat three big meals a day because it just seems to weigh me down. I and love, love you know, the way you're thinking. At 48, I'm still about a 33 waist, so I've I've always maintained that nice you go, healthy boy. core. Good. I'm right. But, um, Good. I'm I don't like th- the way the meat makes me feel when I finish eating it. Exactly. I mean, that's why I tell people: do a plant-based day and then eat a meat day, and notice how you feel. And like you said, yeah. why bother? Why do this if I feel like crud? Um, yeah. yeah, so it's real easy to transition. Of course, make sure you're getting Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source, the minimum supplements everybody should be taking. Um, okay. And just stop eating meat. It really is that simple. And when you do well, it, I'll, you're going to be thrilled. Well, I'll let you know. We're friends on Facebook, so I will, I will be in touch and let you know how the transition goes. Look forward to that. As, as it transitions, and, you guys call back in. Let us know. And good luck to anyone else that wants to do it, too. So thanks, thanks Dr. Joe. Thanks I always for, appreciate you. Oh, man, you're awesome. Thanks so much. Yeah, folks, it's not hard to change your diet, and that's the whole thing with high cholesterol or anything is just change your diet. The best tip that me and Garrett did was get it out of the house and don't let it back in. Don't let your friends bring it over. Don't take it. Don't – just a snack, nothing. Yep. That's a good rule to try to lose weight too. And we essentially – we we went uh, not just you know no meat, but we tried our best just to go completely vegan. So every single month or every other week, we would take something out of our diet. And it was okay, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you're still alive. It was a and little bit of a transition, especially getting used to not having the full feeling after eating meat. But right. Isn't it great to not feel that full feeling, though? It is. Love that now feeling. Now it feels great. God, it's great. I know. It's, a, it's an awesome feeling to feel that good. So, oh, Ahmad's playing some music. That means i got to go to a break. But if you have any health care questions, give us a call, 844-44-DR-JOE. When we come back, we'll give you some facts about the cholesterol-lowering medication, the good, the bad, and the ugly about that as well. And uh, if you have any questions, we want to help you. 844-44-DR-JOE. Hey, folks. Dr. Joe here. So glad you're with us today. We're talking today about cholesterol. And uh, let me give you a little stuff on medication. You know, I'll start taking some callers then, too. I got David on hold. Folks, if you have a question, give us a call at 844-44-DR-JOE. 844-44-DR-J-O-E. That number rings throughout our offices when we're not on the air. So you can call and make appointments. Come see us as well. You can do it online, too, but I'd rather you call us. Uh, somebody said they tried doing it online. They never got a call back from us. I got a, m- a message today. So sometimes it's user error on, on, on your part. That's why I'd rather you call. Sometimes it may be our fault. Just call the office. It's easier. 844-44-DR-JOE. All right. So cholesterol numbers. We talked about that. It's really only part of the picture. Uh, most current recommendations say that in the presence of, di- presence of diabetes, you should start medication when the LDL is higher than 70. Okay. Now, normally, uh, LDL less than 100 is okay. But if you're on diabe- if you're diabetic – it's even more urgent. But once again, is it type 1? Is it type 2? We've done shows on diabetes. If you go to website, drjoe.com, uh, you could listen to the show we did on diabetes. And it may give you some tips that usually work pretty well. A uh, couple of things you need to do. Of course, change your diet. Now, we've covered this over and over and over again. And on the website, drjoe.com, we have the great lecture we did called The Seven Deadly Sins of Nutrition. And then the follow-up to that called So What Can I Eat? So it's really important to cut out the alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener. At least cut back. And you know, when you do it, no one, 35 years, no one has ever said, I regret doing what you said, Dr. Joe. I should have never changed my diet. It was stupid. No one's ever said that. So if we have a 100% track record, 100% success, why wouldn't you do it? It makes absolutely no sense why you wouldn't do it. Except one, the bad stuff tastes good. I remember it. It's not worth it, though. Exercising is important. Again, staying in motion. We did a show a couple of weeks ago on staying in motion and exercise. You go to website, drjoe.com. But the key is just get, get, keep moving. 
Whenever you have a chance to stand up, stand up. I do radio shows standing up. I do television shows standing up. I do my consultations with patients. I'll sit down with them to get a little more comfortable. Then I'll stand up to demonstrate some things. Just try to get in motion as most, uh, best you can. Uh, of course, if you smoke or vape, I want you to quit that. That's free radicals just eating away the lining of your arteries, and that can cause cholesterol to stick to the artery walls and get your blood pressure under control, which works beautifully with our next caller. David, how can we make your day better? Good evening, young man. Uh, I have, uh, about a couple of years ago, I ended up having to take antidepressants for uh, sleep. But anyway, mm-hmm. long story short, what I about a year later, I gained like 50 pounds. <laughs> yep. So needless to say, I want to lose that, but the cholesterol is high and so is the blood pressure. What would you recommend as far as diet, uh, et cetera? Well, the cholesterol and the blood pressure are all going to respond, hopefully, to the same diet. Going to more fruits and vegetables, okay. nuts and seeds. That's what's nice. You can lower, hopefully, both of them at the same time. Because, again, the blood pressure is up for a reason. It's a symptom. Why is the blood pressure up? Oh. Some people just stress. Yeah, stress will do it. Yeah. Now, another thing, and this is a little secret one, just between you and me, David. Don't let everybody else listen to this. But if the stomach is pushing up against the diaphragm, you might have acid reflux, heartburn, burping, gas, bloating. Do you have any of that? Yes, sir. That's okay. reflux. There you go. Let me, let me tell you how this all ties together with you perfectly. The stomach has okay. one job, essentially, and it's to take proteins and break them into amino acids. Now, the amino acid tryptophan becomes serotonin in your brain, and serotonin is the thing that makes you happy and focused. So every case of depression I've ever seen, I've been doing this for a long time now, and I see a lot of them almost daily, there's always an undiagnosed digestive problem. And what the results we usually get is if we pull the stomach, we adjust the stomach down away from the diaphragm, the stomach is able to break the proteins into amino acids to produce the neurotransmitters. Then we get you on Dr. Joe Supergreens, Dr. Joe Essential Source, B-Complex. And now the brain is capable of producing the neurotransmitters that it needs. The same okay. nerve, follow that? The same nerve that controls the stomach controls the heart. It's called the vagus nerve. And the vagus nerve, if it gets irritated, can cause the heart to beat harder and raise the blood pressure. So in many cases, oh, okay. blood pressure and anxiety are physical problems, not chemical. It could be chemical too. But if we fix the physical, the chemical resets itself. So for you, I definitely, oh, okay. re- I definitely recommend getting the stomach fixed. And then cutting out the animal proteins, cutting out the sugars, that should lower your cholesterol down to where it needs to be, and then you should be fine. Sugars, you mean like, uh, like processed food sugars? Breads, cookies, cakes, donuts, pastas, yep, all sugar. So, yep, got to oh, give those okay. up. And I, I, so I, get that out of the way. Yeah. Let me give you this challenge, David. Do everything I say for okay. 60 days. 60 days, everything right. I say. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. So what? I lied to you. But if I'm right, which I am, then you'll say, okay, this is what I need to do to get healthy. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't be making this stuff up. I wouldn't be on the air. We wouldn't be the number one show in the country right now if I was lying to you. Just do it and see what happens. Absolutely. And, yeah. Doesn't work. Doesn't work. What the well, heck? Well, it's funny you mentioned that because I'm dating a nurse practitioner. As a matter of fact, we're really close. And uh, we're eating better. And to your point exactly, that, that made me kind of think of that. And it's been going on two months. and It's made a big difference already. So. Amazing, isn't okay, it? Okay, dokey. Yes, well, tell her yes, I said sir. hi. And if you have any, we have an office I right will. near you, so you could just call the call the number you call during business hours. We can get you an appointment right away. So look it up online and then uh, yeah. set it up with you. Yeah, eight four 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 Doctor Joe during business hours, or you can book it online. We'll get you set up right away. We're in Duluth. You're in Lawrenceville. We can get you right over there. All right, sir. Thank you. Have a great night. Thanks so much for the call, David. I appreciate it. Uh-huh. Awesome, awesome. Love it. Love it when people do things and it works. And how often does it work? All the time. Which is kind of cool. All right. So it's important to get this though. And this is something that happens all the time. People get on medication, their cholesterol goes back to normal, and then they abandon lifestyle changes. They go, my cholesterol is normal. What do I got to worry about it for? You got to fix that. Because again, the medication is only treating the symptoms. And if you're taking statin drugs, it can also prevent your body from properly producing coenzyme Q10. Coenzyme Q10 gets into the cells and makes the cells work. That's why so many patients are tired when they take statin drugs. Again, I'm not saying don't take the statin drugs. I'm saying let's do everything we can to get you off the statin drugs. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Now, statin drugs work in two ways. One is they block the enzyme that produces cholesterol, and they also activate receptors for the low-density lipoproteins in your liver. So what that means is then the liver can recycle the low-density lipoproteins and get it out of the blood. So statin drugs work in two ways, but when it cuts down, when it shot shuts down that enzyme that produces cholesterol, it can also affect the CoQ10. That's why I always say if you are on medications, I do recommend strongly that you take coenzyme Q10. So 
Uh, caller called in, didn't want to come in the air. Caller's neck is making noises similar to Velcro and grinding in the neck. What could be causing it? That's the bones out of place rubbing up against each other. So if you hear your neck grinding, your knees grinding, your hips grinding, it's grinding. It's wearing out the, the cartilage. So I strongly advise you come see us right away so we can get the bones realigned to slow down or stop that grinding. Because if every time you turn your neck, it's grinding and popping, it's wearing out. And if the tires on your car were making noises like they were wearing out, you'd pull over to the side of the road, call AAA, get it fixed. Your spine is a lot harder to fix than your car, much more important than your car, but you got to get it fixed. So go to our website if you want to make an appointment, drjoe.com. Hey, folks, Dr. Joe here. So glad you're with us today. We're talking about cholesterol, and I want to talk about the medication that uh, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not. Uh, and then we're going to talk about what you can do to help get your cholesterol lower. But first, we have to do this. Talking head to toe with Dr. J. Yes, yes. Many of you, your favorite part of the show, the head to toe with Dr. Joe segment, where five minutes before I do the segment, Garrett throws out, he says, talk about this for the next segment. And that's when, so it's always uh, off, the, off, the, off the cuff here. And Garrett, what did you want me to talk about today? How about the hips? The hips, okay. Like Elvis Presley, before your time. <laughs> Quite a bit. Yes. You remember Elvis Presley? He was on a, he got banned from TV for wiggling his hips. So. Is he the guy that walked down the line? No, that was Johnny Cash. Ah. He walked the line, yes. <laughs> walked down the line. Walked down the line, yeah. He was joking. Because you're mine. I walked down the line. <laughs> You, you feel old now, Amat? You feel old? Yeah, okay. Getting there. <laughs> yeah, just okay. shaking his head. He can't even find anything to say. Well, I know. He's just, he's mortified. <laughs> anyway, your hips. One of my favorite joints in the body, as a matter of fact, because they're good joints. They're real deep. You've got your pelvic bones and the hip, the, the, the leg, the femur sits in a deep joint. Now, I'm not a big fan of a lot of the joints. When I die and go to heaven, I'm going to have a long talk with God. I got to say, listen, I don't like certain joints, like the knee. Not, I'm not a fan of the knee. I think we should bend our knees backwards. They'd be more efficient. And, they, and I think they should be ball and socket joints because they're not just sitting on each other. Why are you laughing at me? I'm just imagining, like, walking with backwards knees. How, what would a chair look like, right? Think about <laughs> that, right? <laughs> but I just think it's more efficient. I don't think we have efficiency in the knee. The jaw is another one I'm not a big fan of. But anyway, I digress. Back to the hips. So the hip uh, is a good deep joint, and when it gets damaged, there can be swelling in there. In fact, somebody on uh, social media, because we live stream these shows, asked about bursitis. Now, bursa is a capsule that surrounds the joint that holds fluid because the joint has fluid in it, just like in your car. There's, there's grease in there where you've got fluid in your joints. And itis means inflammation. So appendicitis, a bursitis, is itis, I-T-I-S, is inflammation. So the reason you get bursitis or the reason the hip would, would become inflamed is because it's out of alignment or it was damaged. And when it gets damaged, it can cause an inflammatory reaction. You can tear the, the, the coating, the, the lining inside the hip joint, that can get a little tear in it as well, and that can cause an inflammatory reaction as well. But the key here is always realign the hips. Realign any joint. So if a joint's out of alignment, it'll start rubbing up against the bones above or below it. That'll cause an inflammatory reaction. The body sends out white blood cells to attack that area, and that eats away at the joint. That's called osteoarthritis. And so many times people come in and say, Dr. Joe, I need a, give me a hip replacement. And I say, okay, look at their x-rays, and sure enough, the bones are grinding up against each other. The question I always have to ask is, did anyone ever tell you why your hip wore out or your neck or your shoulder or your wrist? And they say, no, no one ever told me that. The reason is bones are out of place rubbing up against each other. So we got to get the hips back in place. A muscle that's very seldom ever checked on when it comes to hip pain is something called a psoas muscle, P-S-O-A-S. Now, the psoas muscle is a big, thick muscle on a cow. It's what we make filet mignon out of, useless information. But when the psoas spasms, it hooks into your spine and it hooks into your leg, but it also hooks into your diaphragm. Now, you've heard me talk many times about the diaphragm and how important that is for breathing and how important that is if you have acid reflux because the diaphragm has to open. There's a hole in the diaphragm called the lower esophageal sphincter, and it opens and food drops in the stomach, then it closes and you digest food. So the stomach can push up through that hole and cause acid reflux, usually very easy to fix, by the way. We, I've taught all my doctors how to adjust the stomach. But if the psoas is spasmed, it can pull on the diaphragm, it can pull on the spine. The psoas is the only muscle in the body that attaches to a disc. All the other muscles attach to bones. So if it attaches to the low back discs and it spasms, it can actually pull the disc out of place. And it attaches to the leg, so if the psoas spasms, it can pull up on that leg, putting stress on the hip joint. 
So many times you get adjusted chiropractically, that's wonderful, but you always wanna make sure you check the muscles. You wanna check the psoas. And I check the psoas on all my patients. In fact, I've been doing it ever since I've been in practice. And uh, patients are always funny. If they see my other doctors and then I come in one day to see them for whatever reason. And I'll, I'll, I'll check their psoas. I go, oh, I never had that done before. So we want, always wanna check the psoas if there's scoliosis. In fact, I've never had a scoliosis patient ever that didn't have a spasm psoas because the psoas can pull the spine out of place. And then as the spine shifts, that goes back and forth trying to keep you level with the horizon. It's called the writing reflex. And so every scoliosis patient I've ever seen, we have to check the psoas because that may have been the source of the scoliosis way back when. The psoas muscle, also the, the, the sciatic nerve wraps around the sciatic, the, the nerves that form the sciatic nerve wrap through the psoas. And if it spasms, that can be causing shooting pain down your leg as well as uh, pinched nerves in the spine. So it's really important when you look at the hip, you look at the muscles that control the hip. And uh, even if you adjust it, give the best adjustment in the world, you gotta make sure you balance out the muscles around it. We talked last week about the piriformis muscle. Patient came in last week. No one ever mentioned piriformis. You're the first doctor I've ever mentioned it. Piriformis muscle turns the hip out. When it, when it contracts, it turns the hip out. So we wanna check the piriformis muscle, the glute, gluteus muscle, gluteus medius, minimus, and maximus. You gotta check the psoas muscle. Check the nerve supply to the hip. And then if you're having hip pain, maybe the knee's out of place. So if you have knee pain, that can cause the hip to shift and that can cause hip pain. Now, if you're treating the hip, that's not the cause, it's the symptom. One fourth of all the bones in your body are in your feet. If one of those bones comes out of place, it can cause the knee to shift, which can cause the hip to shift to cause hip pain. And that may be where it's coming from. So when you have hip pain, you gotta do a little more analysis than just say, hey, my hip is wrong. Let's get a shot in that area or maybe get a hip replacement. Let's f try to get to the cause of the problem. So even if you get all that, if you don't fix the cause, the problem can come right back again. <laughs> Who doesn't love that song? That's awesome. That's Tim Andrews, my very dear friend uh, and brilliant, brilliant voiceover guy. And now uh, he works on the uh, Von Hessler uh, Doctrine, which I'll be on Thursday this week, as a matter of fact. On, uh, we're going to be talking about candy and stuff. So anyway, uh, I'm Dr. Joe Esposito. If you're just joining us, talking about cholesterol. Uh, Andrea's on, uh, I'm going to get to Andrea in a second. Let me cover a few more things here, a little housekeeping here. So we talked about the statin drugs and how they can block, um, how the, how the cholesterol is produced and also it, it increases the reabsorption of the low density lipoproteins. And that'll help bring down, um, the, the cholesterol levels, which is great. But then the question keeps coming up. Why do I have high cholesterol? Why do I have back pain, neck pain, shoulder pain? I always want to get to the cause of your problem and not just treat the symptoms. Now, Again, I got to say it because people tune in and out all the time to the show. It's okay to treat the symptoms. I don't have a problem treating the symptoms, but also I want to get to the cause. So you don't have to treat the symptoms. So for years, it's believed that there was a straight line between cholesterol and heart disease. But recent research, changing that a little bit. 2017, Minneapolis Heart Foundation study published in a journal of the American Heart Association found that many people who have heart attacks don't have high cholesterol. So the link between cholesterol and heart disease, according to this study, published in the American uh, Heart Association Journal, is pretty weak. That's a big statement right there. Because we all think high cholesterol, heart disease. Maybe not. And when it comes to heart health, your biggest factor is gonna be age. And statins lower the cholesterol levels, but the arteriosclerosis still progresses due to the factors like age and poor diet and smoking and so on, which we've talked about before that it's not so much the cholesterol floating around that's bad, it's the cholesterol stuck to the artery walls that are bad. And that's where you have to have your problems. And that's why you can have normal cholesterol and still have a heart attack. So it could be caused by other things. So to keep your risk of cholesterol, uh, keep your risk of high cholesterol as low as possible and your heart healthy, uh, as healthy as you can, uh, that's gonna go a long way to getting the body healthy. So how do we do that? We eat real foods, unprocessed foods. Ultimately, if something has a label on it, you probably shouldn't be eating it. Now, I eat foods with labels on it, but if you're eating fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds, chances are there's not a big label on that. Uh, eating uh, something raw at every meal. Supplements, minimum supplements should be Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. Keep the body in motion. Don't smoke. Keep your blood pressure under control. Somebody called up before about that. Blood pressure, many times chiropractic can help blood pressure because there's a pinched nerve in the neck. The stomach can be pushed up against the diaphragm. Uh, that can lead to acid reflux, which can irritate the vagus nerve, which can cause problems as well. So you wanna try to find out why you have any problem. I don't care what the problem is. Try to get to the cause of the problem. It makes life a whole lot easier. 
If you have any healthcare questions, only have a few more segments. Eight four 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 four. Doctor Joe, Andrea, how can we make your day better? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? I'm so happy you called. I am confused now because I used to be told that the ratio between the uh, LDL and the HDL, uh, if the HDL was high enough, it it balanced out. So when the total cholesterol looks high and my HDL is over 100, then it balances things out. And now I'm told that it's not the truth anymore. So I want to know another opinion of whether the HDL can cancel right. out the LDLs. Well, the HDLs, are they, they hook on to the LDLs and carry it out of the blood. They bring it back to the liver for recycling. So um, I understand the concept of the, of, of the ratio. But once again, yeah, you want to have the higher HDLs, you know, the, normal, the HDLs up there so that they can carry out the LDLs. But ultimately, according to the study from the American Heart Association, is you want to look at is there any inflammatory reaction? Is the cholesterol stuck to the artery walls? So ultimately, what I've been preaching for 30-some-odd years now, however long it's been, you want to look for the C-reactive protein. C-reactive protein determines if there's an inflammatory reaction in the body and if the cholesterol is stuck to the artery walls. So the ratio, I, I, I still understand the ratio, and I understand the logic behind it, but the one thing that I find is even more important than that is the C-reactive protein. So that's what I would go with. if I, When I get mine checked, I always get my C-reactive protein checked. They charged me $200 the last time I asked for that. The last time I got it, part of the lab test, was in 2014. Okay. They've done the creatinine serum level, but not the, um, not the uh, yeah. creatinine. The C-reactive. Well, C-reactive yes. C-re- yes. protein. Yeah, and, I'm, yes. I'm, I, and, and again, it's changing. More doctors are getting more progressive. They're starting to realize what, I, what I've been teaching. Um, and again, I'm not the only person teaching it. Uh, and they're saying, okay, let's go ahead and do that. So I'd get the C-reactive protein checked. I think you'll be pretty happy with it. Okay. okay. All right. Thanks, Andrew. And Appreciate don't it. be worried about it until I get that. <laughs> well, always be worried about it. Stay away from alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener. Those are the inflammatory foods. Yes, um, I know. Okay, eat more fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds. Get a lot I of do. nutrients like super greens and essential source, nitric oxide, Dr. Joe's. It's all on the website, drjoe.com. Um, and then I don't worry about it. And every time I get it checked, <laughs> I, get, I go, okay, I'm good. So I don't worry about those things, but I like to get it checked anyway just to make sure. But okay. so far, 100% success rate. I, I think we got good, good batting average. All right? Okay, Thanks, great. Andrew. Thank Appreciate you. It. All right, let's take another quickie. Susan, how can we make your day better? Um, great. Hi. Uh, this the first time I've heard you, so I'm excited to find you. Oh, but, um, welcome we, aboard. I, I was just diagnosed recently with rheumatoid, arth- rheumatoid arthritis, and I am super concerned about it because I'm fairly young and really good shape. I eat really well. Um, okay. Anyway, and of course, I've been to a rheumatologist, and they definitely, I have really high numbers, and so they definitely said I'm at the beginning stages. Uh, my hands are okay. swelling some and okay. a couple other areas. Okay. And I just wanted to find out what you would recommend as far as, you okay. know, what, what, what the against, up, first, up, Okay. Right? All right, time out, Susan. I'm up against the clock here, so let me answer it for you, okay? Um, autoimmune disease. The body is attacking itself. So what we have to do is we have to – there's something called T re, regulator T cells, which can help normalize that reaction. But we have to stop the body from attacking itself. The number one food and the number one and two foods that the body attacks are wheat and dairy products. So your new listener, I know you don't know this yet, but you got to give up all the wheat and all the dairy. Just by doing that, many times that helps stabilize the immune system. Then we got to make sure we're we're healing the gut because many times this is related to something called leaky gut syndrome where the gut can become inflamed uh, because of these toxic chemicals that the body's uh, bringing into the blood. And if I had more time, I'd give you a better answer than that, but I only have a minute. Um, so super greens an essential source. Awesome. Uh, Dr. Joe's nitric oxide that increases circulation that might help as well at your age. I think anybody over 30 or 35 should be taking nitric oxide. And then I want you to consider adrenal support. The adrenal glands produce something called prostaglandins, which help bring down the inflammation. But with any autoimmune disease, we have to stop causing it. So cut out the wheat and the dairy products. Absolutely. Something raw at every meal. I know I sound like a broken record. Super greens an essential source, nitric oxide, and I would also recommend vitamin D to make sure your, 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 uh, your immune system functions normally again. All that's on the website, drjoe.com. Hey, Dr. Joe here. So glad you're there. We're talking today about cholesterol. And now, cholesterol can be your friend because I want you to understand this. First and foremost, cholesterol is a vital component of every cell uh, in, in your body. Uh, in other words, there's no life in your body 
without cholesterol. Now, that will automatically tell you that that in its in a, of itself, that it's got to have something good. Every cell in your body needs it. Uh, it's one of our best friends, and we wouldn't be here without it, of course, because we need that. And if you lower the cholesterol too low, that's when you start running the risk of actually dying. You can't make estrogen, testosterone, cortisone, host of other vital hormo hormones that come from cholesterol. So it's a, it's a fine line here. We got to get that Goldilocks zone. We don't want it too high. Well, um, again, if it's too high, I want to find out why. Again, about one or two in 100 actually have genetically high cholesterol. The other folks do very well when they follow the advice uh, that we're giving here. Vitamin D, you need, to, you need cholesterol to create vitamin D. UVB rays and sunlight interact with cholesterol in your skin and convert it to vitamin D. If your cholesterol levels are too low, you might not be able to generate enough vitamin D. Now, in the winter, and I take vitamin D supplements on the website, drjoe.com, I take vitamin D3, not vitamin D2, because vitamin D2 is synthetic. It has to be converted into vitamin D3. But it's on the website, drjoe.com, and I take it every day unless it's the summer months and I've been outside a lot. If I haven't been out for a while, then I'll also take, uh, I'll take it as well. So we talked about the good cholesterol, the bad cholesterol. Um, there's the connection because what happens is when, when you damage your body, your body uses cholesterol to generate new cells. And so if I cut my arm, body's generating, sending cholesterol, my cholesterol might go up because the body has to produce more cholesterol to create cells to repair the damage. If you keep damaging your artery walls, Let's assume you're smoking, you have a high acid diet, you have high blood pressure. That can put pressure on the artery walls and can actually put little scratches or tears in the artery wall. The body produces cholesterol to generate new cells. So if your body's constantly inflamed, if you have a bad diet, if you're, con if you're smoking, that can raise your cholesterol levels because the body's trying to produce more cholesterol to produce new cells. So once again, if you have high cholesterol, you have to start thinking, why is it so high? What am I doing? What's causing an inflammatory reaction? Again, it could be genetic, but very rarely is it. And if it is that, what do we got to do to fix it? Now, let's start taking some more callers at 844 doctor Joe. Nick, how can we make your day better? Yes, sir. I've been told I was born with a small esophagus uh -huh. and I always had trouble eating. And it's just as far as swallowing. Uh -huh. And uh, here lately, it feels like my there's the research I've done, my LES uh, just kind of wants to close off. Sure, lower esophageal and, sphincter, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, and uh, none of the doctors have ever addressed that or listened to me when I tell them that. Sure. But I started using, and I won't say the name brand, Good. started using uh, CBD oil, mm -hmm. and it took about three or four weeks, uh, and I started noticing that it was easing up, and yeah. now I can actually eat a full meal without that closing up. Have you heard anything? And it was it was a certain brand mm -hmm. that I won't say, but yeah. uh, because I'd tried a couple of other ones. Yes. But the terrapines, if I'm saying it right, were terpenes, different. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a big fan of CBD oil. We have one on our website, drjoe.com, um, and I like uh, CBD oil. And, as, again, you have to try different ones because diff you got to make sure it's a good quality product because right now CBD is the wild, wild west. And people right. are – you know, you can buy it at a grocery store. You can buy it at a gas station. So we have one on our website. It's called Dr. Joe's Hemp Oil, and it has the CBD and the terpenes, and it has the, the collection of the uh, cannabinoids. Um, so I like CBD oil, and um, um, I'm glad it's working for you. And so if it's working for you, absolutely keep doing it. You might want to come see us, Nick, because the stomach may be pushing up against the diaphragm, and that may be causing the stress on the lower esophageal sphincter. And if we can pull that back down and then adjust the spine, open up the nerve supply to that area – uh, that may help you tremendously, and maybe along okay. with the CBD oil, really get you to a whole nother level. All right. I appreciate it. Thanks, Nick. Appreciate the call. All right. Let's see. Oh, we got plenty of time here. All right. Keith, how can we make your day better? Hello? Hello Keith. Yes, Keith. Hey there. Hey. Uh, I want to know about the relationship between diabetes and uh, cholesterol. Uh, my doctor has recently prescribed a statin drug for me. Sure. My A1C is right now at 5.9 on uh, a uh, type 2 diabetic medication. Right. Uh, but I have my lab results right in front of me from a test a couple of weeks ago where my cholesterol, 140, triglycerides, 100. My calculated LDL is a 77, and my HDL is 43. I'm wondering if I should taking statin drugs with numbers that are considered normal. 
Yeah, the numbers look pretty good there. I think they're just being concerned because, again, if you're diabetic, you want to start looking um, normal might be 100 for HDLs, uh, you know, and, and if, if it's around 70, then they start getting worried. 200, you know, uh, the, uh, L, uh, um, is desirable for LDL, uh, HDLs, I'm sorry. So if your HDLs are okay. around 70 or that, and, and you're diabetic, they'll kind of jump on that and get you on a medication. So that's what it sounds like. The doctor's being overly cautious, which may not be a bad thing. I'm not against that. Um, the, if you go to our website, drjoe.com, listen to the show we did on diabetes. Because okay. my concern for you would be let's get that let's get that blood sugar under control. And it's usually pretty easy. Get on a plant-based diet, lots of fiber. Uh, cut out, of course, your sugars. Um, there's a supplement we have at our office. It's not on the website. It's called Gymnema. And I get my diabetics on this because it helps stabilize the blood sugar. Works really well for that. And if you're eating a lot of fiber, fiber can block up the receptor sites so you don't absorb the sugar, and it can push the sugar through your colon. And many times that helps take the stress off the pancreas and help lower your insulin because you're lowering the sugar. So I would listen All to right. the show on diabetes and at least Super Green's an essential source, and let's see if we can get that under control, and then maybe hopefully the doctor will get you off the statins then too. Well, a uh, stressful job. I know yeah. I have a lot of stress. Absolutely. So I know my cortisol is probably way up there, yeah. and mm -hmm. that leads to uh, – insulin resistance. Absolutely. Yes, it does. Yep, 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 yep. So um, again, if you change your diet, you may not be able to change the, phys the stress from your job, but if you have uh, physical stress, neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, we're really good at working on that, my team of doctors and I. The chemical stress you, know, you, you can fix, and then that make, makes the emotional stress a lot easier to deal with too. All right. Well, I'm planning to come see you soon. Perfect. We look forward to meeting you, Keith. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. All right. So with the cholesterol, with the statins, I just want to let you know that there are some side effects you got to worry about it. Uh, nerve damage, po uh, polyneuropathy, you can get that. Uh, rhabdomyolysis can be something where the muscles actually start to degenerate. Uh, cognitive impairment can happen, decreased function of immune system, liver problems, including, uh, including potential increase in liver enzymes. Um, uh, depression can occur from these medications. So again, I'm not saying don't take the medication, what I'm saying is let's do everything we can to try to get it under control so that you don't need the medication. That's really what I want you to start considering because that's where the problem comes in. You're treating the cause, not just treating the symptoms. And if you are taking medication, again, I'm not here to get you off that. Uh, I'd love to if you help us, um, but I can't tell you to come off it. I do recommend you take a supplement called Coenzyme Q10 because CoQ10 is, is reduced when you're taking the statin drugs because the same, it's essentially the same enzyme that produces cholesterol produces coenzyme Q10. And so you want to make sure that you're, uh, you, you get that CoQ10 back up. And that creates a lot more energy. You start to feel better when you get that CoQ10 working, and then you have a little more energy so you can start exercising and making better food choices as well. So, folks, got to go to break. Only one more segment. Um, the website, we have uh, over 1,000 hours of podcasts on the website, drjoe.com. He's a nice guy. He's on yeah, we should put in a, uh, definitely put that in there. WSB, Atlantis News, and Talk. Hey, folks, Dr. Joe Esposito here. Last segment of the show. Can you believe that? Uh, let me take one more caller, and then I got to talk about what you can do to lower your cholesterol naturally. Dwayne, how can we make your day better? Well, uh, a few years back, I had uh, diverticulitis. Yes. And I know you talked a lot about, you know, fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds. Right. Well, according to the doctor back then, told me I couldn't eat nuts and seeds anymore. Right. Is there any... What should I really be eating at this point? Because I want to get a healthier lifestyle. I drive a lot. Oh, yeah. I mean, I drive a lot. Yeah. So my options of food is very limited. Right. If you go to the web, some yeah. sure, go to the website, drjoe.com, and listen to the show I did called So What Can I Eat? And in there, I talk about um, what you can eat, even if you're traveling a lot. As far as nuts and seeds go, I think the jury's out. Some doctors agree. Some doctors disagree on nuts and seeds. But you can always eat nut butter, cashew butter, almond butter, sesame butter, uh, sunflower seed butters. You could always eat nut butters. That's fine because that's not going to cause any problem with diverticulitis. But the irony of this is that the reason you have the diverticulum is probably because you didn't have enough fiber. And many times patient doctors will say, well, don't eat too much fiber because you have diverticulosis or diverticulitis. Well, you need the fiber so the colon can heal. So it's kind of a catch-22, but if, if the raw food is irritating you, try cooked fruits and vegetables. And then once it starts to heal, super greens an essential source, real easy to absorb. And then once it starts to heal, then you can maybe get into the more raw food. And then chiropractic care to open up the nerve supply to the colon, of course, is really important as well. But as far as nuts and seeds, just go to a nut butter. How about that? All right. I like a plan. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. 
And folks, that's the minimum supplements you should be taking every day are Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. They're two powders. They taste fine. Um, I mix it with coconut milk or almond milk. Um, if you want it a little sweeter, you could add a touch of stevia to it. You can mix it with uh, frozen fruit, bananas, berries, make a smoothie out of it. Uh, mix anything you want. People, well, can I mix it with water? You can mix it with anything you want. Some people do it with orange juice or apple juice. Whatever makes you happy, just get it in your gut. And I couldn't imagine a day going by without me taking Super Greens and Essential Source. And then I take adrenal support um, because as I get older and I, I live a pretty stressful life. Vitamin D, especially in the winter, you got to do that. Digestive enzymes whenever I eat a cooked meal. And it's funny because if you start eating right, you're going to eat less food. Because when you're hungry, you're not hungry for food. You're hungry for nutrition. And you're going to save so much money on your food bills. If you go to a restaurant, you're going to order the healthiest thing on the menu. is always the cheapest thing that you're going to have way more money, even if you buy the supplements. People, people tell me all the time, I can't afford not to take your supplements. All the supplements are on the website, drjoe.com. So let's talk about things you can do to help lower your cholesterol. Now, as Americans, of course, it's real easy because just cut out your animal fats. That's pretty simple because we eat so much of it. But the problem was people did that, and they started eating a lot of grains and hydrogenated oils and high-fructose corn syrup when the low-fat diet was a fad. That causes inflammation. Inflammation can irritate the body and cause little tears, especially in the blood vessels. The body then has to increase its cholesterol production so it can make more cells. And the body need, needs cholesterol to do, do repair work and make new cells. Chronic inflammation is actually caused by a laundry list of things. Oxidized cholesterol. Again, the cholesterol itself isn't so bad, but when it oxidizes, it causes a problem. Whenever you cook animal proteins, that'll oxidize the fat. Scrambled eggs. Eggs are high in cholesterol. If you eat them like sunny side up, not so much oxidation of the cholesterol. You scramble it, lots of oxidation to the cholesterol. When you eat anything at a high temperature, the animal proteins, that's going to cause problems. Sedentary lifestyle, emotional stress. Again, the body's producing cholesterol as a response to stress many times, physical, chemical, and emotional. Eating a lot of sugar and grains, eating trans fats, smoking. So if you can bring down your inflammation, every disease known to man does really, really well. So what you need to do is make sure you're eating the right foods. Now, there's uh, uh, one protein uh, uh, One protein that uh, people use a lot is uh, algae now because the animal proteins are not good. Now, Dr. Joe's Super Greens has algae in it, has chlorella and spirulina, but it's also a great source of omega-3 fatty acids. Omega-3 fatty acids are unbelievable when it comes to bringing down inflammation, even pain. I've had patients in severe pain. I'd give them a triple dose of Dr. Joe's omega-3 fatty acids, and it helps bring down the inflammation. So short-term, that's fine. But Dr. Joe's omega-3 fatty acids are spectacular for bringing down inflammation, and you need omega-3 fatty acids for brain function. Um, and so they're on the website, drjoe.com. I take Dr. Joe's omega-3s every single day. I couldn't imagine not because it helps my brain work better. And it helps fight inflammation. So it's really important. You got to get, if you're going to eat fats, I want to make sure you're getting good sources of fats. Things like olives and olive oil. Extra virgin organic olive oil is important. If it's not, you want to know how it's real olive oil? Take it and put it in the refrigerator overnight. When you wake up the next day, look at the oil. If it's cloudy, it's a good, it's a good olive oil. If it's not, yeah, if it's cloudy, that's good. If it's not cloudy, it's probably not even real olive oil or it's a combination of different tops, types of oil mixed in there. If you're gonna use coconut oil, extra virgin organic coconut oil as well, that's the one I usually cook with because it's more stable at high temperatures. Avocados. Now, I gotta be careful because if I eat a lot of fatty foods, I put on weight. I don't process fats very well and that's the thing that puts weight on me. So I tried going to this high-fat ketogenic diet to see what it was like. Oh, my God, I gained weight. So you got to be careful. And if you're going to do fats, make sure they're good fats. Raw nuts and seeds, we talked about that. Exercise is important. Get the body working. Uh, we talked in this the other day when we talked about movement. And when you move, the muscles are contracting, and it's pumping your lymphatic system. Now, the lymphatic system are your glands, the lymph glands, that filter out junk. So whenever you put something in your body, uh, that's a foreign protein or an inflammatory protein. It goes to the lymph glands, and the lymph glands kind of have a meeting and say, what should we do with this? Oh, let's get it out of the system, or let's store it somewhere. But it can cause an inflammatory reaction. If you have swollen glands, that means the lymph glands are being stressed. It's filtering out too much junk. The way you get the lymph glands cleaned up is movement. When muscles contract, they pump the lymphatic system. Again, if you smoke, you got to quit smoking. If you do alcohol, I would recommend you cut that out. Uh, nothing really good comes from alcohol, ultimately long-term, uh, and it can cause liver damage. And the liver can get clogged up. You get a fatty liver, 
and then the liver can't filter out the junk. And where does cholesterol, where is it made? In the liver. Where is it recycled? In the liver. So if you're putting stress on the liver, high fructose corn syrup, sugars, alcohol, the liver can't do its job. So it's really easy when it comes to a nutritional standpoint to get well. Go to our website, drjoe.com. Just type in, so what can I eat? We have a whole lecture there on what you can eat. And if you have a health problem, if you have neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, numbness, tingling, if you've ever been in a car accident, stop suffering needlessly. 